Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at home link 1.9, that is Unit 1, Lesson 9, U.S. Traditional Subtraction. And when I say traditional, I mean this is the kind of stuff that your parents did when they were your age. They will certainly be able to help you, um, but there's also this family note right here that walks you through the process step by step, you know, the way I'm about to do right now. So let's get to it. I'm actually going to skip problem number one because it's just in the tens. I bet you can knock that one out. Let's take a look at number two. 613 minus 249. 613 minus 249. Now, again, as I've stated before, sometimes kids get confused when we are presented with a problem that uh, requires extra steps. And our brains are always looking for the easiest solution. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to create an estimate, and I'm going to do it below, okay, because I'm going to need some room off to the side. You'll see what I mean. So 613 minus 249, if I round that to the nearest hundreds, here's what my estimate would look like. 613 would round down to 600, as would 249. It would round down to 200. It's almost a 250, but not quite. So 600 minus 200, of course, is going to give me... 400. Now, watch what I do here and see if this doesn't look familiar to you. 613 minus 249. 3 minus 9 is 6. 1 minus 4 is 3. And 6 minus 2 is 4. Now, some of you might be looking at that and me thinking, well, what's wrong with that? That looks right to me. But again, if you look closer, you're going to realize that you can't subtract 9 from 3. You can't subtract 4 from 1. These numbers on the top are smaller than the ones on the bottom. You see, what I find is, is a typical mistake for, for guys your age is that when presented with a smaller digit at the top, like so, your brain wants to make sense of it, so you will reverse the process. So when I said 3 minus 9 is 6, what was really happening is I was taking 9 and subtracting it minus 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. 4 minus 1 is 3. Okay, Our brains want to switch those around because we can't rationalize how to subtract a larger number from a smaller number. So we just flip it. It's a common mistake, but it is a mistake. So let's see what we really need to do here. I have three ones in my ones column. I want to take away nine ones. So what I have to do is I have to borrow, which means I have to go to the tens over here. But unfortunately, I don't have enough tens to spare. I don't have enough tens to take away four tens. So I have to go all the way over again to the hundreds. Okay. So I have six groups of 100, 600. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one of those hundreds and make this into five hundreds, and my 100 is going to become 10 tens. 10 tens plus 110 is 11 tens. 10 plus 1 is 11. But now I want to take one of those tens and make it into... 10 ones and added to my three ones gives me 13 ones. So just a little sidebar right here. If I were to take 500 and add it to 10 tens, otherwise known as 100, if I were to add it to 13 ones, that would bring me back to my original total of 613. So 500 plus 100 plus 13 is just another way of expressing the value of 613. All right, back to the problem at hand. So now I have my 613 broken up into 500s, 10 10s, and 13 ones. So now I subtract. 13 minus 9 is 4. 10 minus 4 is 6. And 5 minus 2 is 3. So my actual answer to this problem is 364. 
Now that uh, number, 364, rounds up to 400. But then again, so does 436. That would round down to our estimate of 400. So if you're, if you're looking at that thinking, oh, my estimate works, uh, so this answer could be right. Another way we can test that is by taking the two bottom numbers in our subtraction problem and adding them together to see if we get the third number. So if I take my uh, difference, that's the uh, answer to my subtraction problem, and I take the smaller amount of my two numbers that I subtracted, it should add up to the larger number. So let's try that off to the side. Okay, so 364. If I add that to 249, that should get me a, a total of 613. Let's see if that works. 4 plus 9 is 13. I'm going to carry that 10. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 plus 4 is 11. Carry that 10, group of 10s, otherwise known as 100. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Oh, I was right, 613. So if I compare that to 249 plus 436, if I add those two numbers together, you know that's not going to give me the same amount that I started with. That gives me 685. So again, it doesn't work. Okay? So subtraction that re requires you to regroup to borrow is a bit tricky. There are some extra steps involved, but you can do it once you learn what the steps are. Okay, uh, Rome was not built in a day. It, it took thousands upon thousands of days. So the, the whole meaning behind that expression is that you want to take it one step at a time. You're not going to get it all in a second. You have to actually take your time. It actually will really save you time if you slow down and do each step, because having to do something over uh, takes more time than just taking your time during the process in the first place. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. I'm going to actually pick problem number four. It's one of the, the problems they presented in number sentence style. 951 minus 695. And again, they do this to see if they could trick you. That's all there is to it. By writing it side by side, they want to see if you will forget to do some regrouping. So I'm just going to write the second number, 695, underneath 951. And as you can see, 1 is too small compared to 5, and 5 is too small compared to 9. So again, I'm going to have to do some regrouping. Okay? Uh, I got to borrow a group of 100, making 900s into 800s. I'm going to take my... 10 tens, which is 100, and add it to my 5 tens to give me 15 tens. And then I'm going to take away a group of 10, leaving me 14 tens, add my 10 ones to my 1 1, it gives me 11 ones. 800 plus 140 plus 11. That's 951. So now I subtract. 11 minus 5 is 6. 14 minus 9 is 5, and 8 minus 6 is 2. So that's my answer. But if you're still not convinced, I could just take the 256, add it back to the 695, and that should get me back to 951, which it does. Okay? Take your time. Walk through each step. Check your work. Confirm that your answer is correct by adding the two smaller numbers back together to see if it gives you the number you started with at the top. Okay? And, of course, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. They will happily help you. And, and lastly, down here at the bottom, do the practice problems. Okay? They will help sharpen your skills. Practice makes perfect. I know it's a, an old-timey phrase, but it's true. That's why we keep saying it. All right. Have a good day. We'll talk again soon. Thanks.